So y'all have probably seen this pile of parts before and might vaguely recognize it, uh, probably because I've made one before. Uh, and I have this right here. This is the first one that I made. Um, this is pile of parts to build another one of these, but uh, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. These are the old PCBs that I had made, the very first variants of this 1.2 version. Um, and they work fine, there's nothing wrong with them, but I just recently had some of these made and I think I wanna try this out because this looks significantly cooler, in my opinion, than this. Um, electrically, this is the exact same thing. The only difference is I did rearrange some components and swap out some footprints. So this one has a bigger resistor pad so you can use uh, through hole resistors or surface mount and because of how the pads are spaced you could use even bigger surface mount resistors which is good because I am completely out of 0805 10Ks but I have 1206 10K resistors somewhere I couldn't find them so I just have some through hole uh, but I just I, I, I just like how this looks uh, oh, I did also move the re regulators instead of being right here. One of them's up here, the other's on the other side. Um, but, I don't know, I'm gonna see if I can't build this. This is already flashed, I know this works, so hopefully I don't have any problems. Um, but otherwise, since I've already done one of these before, I'm gonna try and speed run this. And, uh, well, let's go. Um, so first, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the resistors. These are just generic 10K through hole resistors. You wanna, you do wanna have these on top. Orientation doesn't matter, they're resistors. But the reason you want those on top and not on bottom you're going to have to trim these leads flush. And this is my first time soldering one of these after dark boards. Uh, you do... This board is of course from Osh Park and one of the things, I'm sure I've talked about this before, but screw it, I'll mention it again. Uh, one of the reasons why Osh Park boards are so cheap in particular is because their boards, they sell you, hang on, I'm trying to figure out the best way to word this. When they make boards, they're not just making your one single board. They're making a whole stack of boards all next to each other and lined up. So what happens is the boards end up getting panelized. And what that means is they're connected with these shitty little uh, tabs here that you can see by my thumbnail. Um, in most cases, that's not an issue. All it means is you just have to spend a couple minutes and file that smooth or sand it down or whatever. Uh, in my case, I've already filed that down on this board. Only took a few minutes, but I figured oop, that hit me in the forehead. But I figured it would be better to get that done beforehand. Okay. Next, I'm going to do the buttons. Oh, I did rearrange the position of the buttons, too, to something that I think makes a little bit more sense logically. Oh, I shouldn't have soldered this pin first. Because now when I pick it up and put my finger on it, it's going to be hot. That wasn't fun, but that's okay. I'm just doing that to make sure that the switches are as flush as possible to the board.
trim these flush. Just put my thumb over the shrapnel to avoid any unfortunate accidents. These flying off and hitting me in the face, or, well, specifically my eye. I don't know about you guys, but I'm rather fond of my eyes. In fact, you might say I'm attached to them. Okay, not perfect, but good enough. So next, we need to do the switches. And I, ha I managed to scrounge up a couple more of these low profile switches that I like so much. But otherwise, if you don't want to use the low profile switches, you can use regular tac tactile switches. Um, I have my uh, other cart reader here, the original. These are the type of switches that you can use, but I don't like them. I like the big buttons better. I was, in fact, the biggest motivator to build this PCB in the first place. Trim everything completely flat. And then, we're good to go ahead and solder this on. It goes just like that. And for the soldering montage. reason I'm swapping back and forth between solders is I want to try and use up the rest of this but I don't want to have to keep trying to feed solder while I'm doing this and like usual just do two pins to hold it down and then uh, and touch them up, make sure that it's completely flat and flush. Good thing I did that one because that was not. Okay. 
Now, we just need to solder them all down. And the tip that's on this iron is wide enough to do two pins at the same time, which is kind of cool. Never done that before. Seems to be working. Of course, I had to say something, didn't I? There it goes. So, in the off chance anyone is actually watching and listening to this video and has a YouTube account and does comment on my videos, I, um, I've been working on a mechanical keyboard and I finally, finally, finally have all the bits to finish it. Of course, I won't be starting from scratch. It's already mostly done. Would you guys be interested in me making a video on that? I've already pretty much assembled the PCB. I just need to do a couple final touches on it. Uh, like the like fix the USB port and then after that I just need to install the switches and physically assemble the keyboard and it should be good to go but anyway do you all want me to make a video on that I was thinking probably not because that's just gonna be a lot of sitting here soldering but I'll leave it up to you guys Yeah, this isn't working.
Excellent. It's hot on account of me just soldering it together. Okay. And this is why it's important to make sure it's flush before you just solder all the pins. Now I just need to fill all these holes with solder, but before I do so, I'm going to go take a quick break, get some water, let the camera cool down, etc. I'll be right back. Okay, so I cleaned up a little, um, but I haven't done anything else. I just turned the soldering iron back on, give that a second to heat up, uh, but otherwise I just need to continue soldering and we should be good to go. concerned that these pins aren't going to make good contact but I think everything should work out uh, this PCB is of course thicker than I uh, thicker than the previous revision the older ones were made out of 1.2 millimeter PCB material this is a 1.6 PCB I'm going to make sure I go over each of these holes twice, make sure that the solder is fully, uh, you know, so that it wicks down into the hole. Make sure everything is good.
Now it's not too tremendous a big deal if these solder joints don't work out too well because thankfully I can touch it up from the top. Um, but if these don't work then the uh, Arduino is going to have trouble interfacing with uh, the LCD or the micro SD card or um, the OLED screen or whatever but it should still be able to read the actual cartridges with zero issues so One thing I do got to be careful with is this is one of the uh, faulty boards. Uh, Oshpark just started up their After Dark production, and this board was part of their first batch, which went out, um, <clears throat> which was using the uh, wrong material here, which means it's a little bit more sensitive to heat than it should be. Probably going to be fine because I'm not using lead free solder, which means I am using lower temperatures. But just in case. Okay. I don't know how well you can see this. Let me try focusing. You can see how recessed the pins are in those holes. That's why a thinner PCB might be better. But I want it after dark, and after dark only comes in 1.6. So that's where we are. I ended up taking a much longer break than I intended. Uh, my phone, after I finished recording that video, kept flashing up the micro SD symbol, uh, which I have no idea what that means. Usually it means it's still writing to the card, but it continued to do that for like 20 minutes. I've only ever seen it do that for like 10 seconds. So I got a little bit concerned and backed up the whole SD card just in case which since it's a big SD card was it, it took an hour and a half I suppose it wouldn't have taken nearly as long if I had um, if I didn't keep as many uh, videos on the SD card And I should have did that the uh, in the first half. That went a lot quicker. Okay. What next? Next, I should clean this up.
So I'm just using a little bit of paper towel with some isopropyl alcohol to clean up this flux here. streaky but that's okay and yes I am aware that the these uh, oh man that was probably out of focus wasn't it uh, that these pins are empty uh, but thankfully that's just the voltage in pin on the Arduino and I don't care about that pin noise okay to trim this TP4056 module a little bit. I don't know why it has these little legs on it, but they're not important and they do get in the way, so they're gone. I did test this TP4056 module ahead of time, by the way, because on occasion you do get bad modules, and desoldering this thing would probably suck, so I'd like to avoid that if I don't have to. To make sure these solder joints are good, I did make the uh, PCB have through holes instead of just surface mount. I want to do that with all of them. I should have done that with all of them. But I wasn't thinking about it. Okay. So next, oh balls. I was supposed to do the screen first. Oops. We'll do it next. I'm going to have to desolder that. Probably. Alright, so how do we want to do this? VCC is on top, ground is on bottom. So this first one needs to be shorted like that, and this one needs to be like that. Actually, I'm not going to use that solder anymore. I don't like how uh, I don't like how it's finishing. It's not very shiny. It's supposed to be the same stuff, but I don't know what's going on here. that won't 
shine up, of course, whatever. better than I'd expected. Not what I wanted to do, but... I'm just using this ribbon cable to hold the pins while I desolder. This is not working. Just dipping a little bit of flux on here. There we go. Okay. Might as well use these pins. I didn't realize the camera stopped, but I didn't get too far. Uh, I did finish soldering down the uh, pins, and then I just cut the plastic part off. Um, I'm not going to solder down the screen just yet, in case... I don't think I am, but just in case I'm forgetting something else dumb. So, but it does fit in there quite nicely. And actually, one nice thing about the, um, the through-hole resistors is that it gives the screen something nice and flat to sit on. But next I gotta pop in these two voltage regulators. The one without the pins is the 5 volt one. I'm grab some pins for it. This is going to be This far pin to the right is the input. So 
So that goes in there like that. Hindsight, I should have soldered the pins to it first. Not kind of them being a little bit of a pain in the ass to get to, but I guess that's why I'm doing this video. Try and work out the kinks for you guys in case you want to make one like this. need to, but I'm going to trim these monster pins off. I'm going to take the pins off this one too. Because I don't want to use the bent pins. Or. Wait. Let's plan this out first. That is. That's crooked and that's going to bother the shit out of me. Okay. I don't know why I put the labels on this side. That was dumb. So middle, of course, is the ground pin. Left one, the one close to the edge, is the input. Which means that needs to go like that. So yeah, I do want to remove these pins because they're backwards. Oh, that was wonderful. I just got a solder blob all over this thing. And I don't have any extra three volt regulators I can use. Oh, never mind. So our blob wasn't actually attached to anything, it was just resting. I don't need to take that off, but I will because I can.
Eh, not perfect, but better. Now I just need to solder in the LED. There it is. And the memory card reader. Cool, 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 cool. Next is this thing, uh, memory card reader. Again, put the markings on the most inconvenient side, but pins are backwards. So let's get those desoldered. There are too many pins for me to do it this way. Or maybe not. I'm getting there.
know why I'm only able to get every other hole. I'm making a total mess of this uh, uh, solder mask. Using what a little bit of flux does. Okay. Now it's probably wise to socket this, but I haven't been socketing this part in a while. Ooh, and it just barely fits over the regulator. That is nice. That worked out nicely. The only problem is it's difficult to hold that. clean it and we're good to go So much for uh, speed running. This thing has taken significantly longer than I expected. Um, I was about to solder the battery on. I'm going to go ahead and solder the uh, screen on here. I had to pause while the camera cooled down. I, all I did, I just cleaned up a little bit with uh, some isopropyl alcohol. And this one. I don't know why I wanted. 
of these battery battery leads is so much shorter. Yeah, it's not happening. enough and we'll pull this out one throw shit everywhere and I'm just gonna use this battery for now set the Game Boy Color let's find out what this game is no idea if this game actually works, so uh, bear with me if it doesn't. Good sign that that all works. Doraemon 2! That sounds right. Let's see if it dumps. Check some matches. Nice. Open a new game. No idea what this game is either. Oh well, don't need that. Yu-Gi-Oh! DS? I don't know. It's probably right. It's taking its sweet time. Probably froze. I don't think it's supposed to take that long. Well, that's not good. I don't think it's bad, but it's certainly not good. Try it one more time just for... Then again, I, I did literally pull these games out of my uh, broken pile, so some of them are broken, I'm not surprised. I don't have the patience for this. Um, but instead of breaking this off and soldering on another uh, cart reader here, I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one because I did finally get another PCB made. I got some of these made up. Now, this, if you have absolutely no idea what this is, uh, this is the uh, flash adapter for the original Sandy Cart Reader. This one works by, you take this, you insert your flash adapter, this is for like AM29 FO16 chips, you insert this into the Super Nintendo slot, helps if you center it and put it in straight, and use it that way. That's cool and all, but it's a little bit chunky. Oh, hey, look, it finished. It says checksum matched. So that was just taking a while. Probably shouldn't have interrupted it. Oh, well. But I want to build a flash adapter for my new cart reader here. I think that would be fantastic. Pen 
and uh, ah, okay. So actually, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end this video here. Just stop, because the whole purpose of this video was to make a new cart reader, and I believe I've done so. Uh, I'm going to make another video just to assemble this. Uh, we'll call that part two, even though I'm going to upload that first. Uh, but I'll have links back and forth in both videos. Um, but otherwise, thanks for sticking with me, guys. I know it was a little bit longer. It was certainly longer than I planned it to be. But it all worked out in the end, so I think all is well. Have a good night.